Hey there everyone, Brady Bot here. And today, we're gonna to be talking about a very important decision-making idea in the game of bridge. And this idea will come at the intersection of two competing concepts. On the one hand, we have probability, which is a pure mathematical concept that's going to allow us to determine the likelihood of the success or failure of different lines of play or different layouts of the cards. On the other hand, we have bridge logic. Now, bridge logic is what we use when we want to utilize and understand our experience within the game and adjust the belief of the likelihood of certain layouts of the cards. Let's take a look at a hand from the recent Platinum and Star Robot Individual that I played, which will illustrate this dynamic in action. This is the hand that play I played in day two of the Platinum and Star Robot Individual. It was the second board of the set, and the scoring is match points. Uh, the bidding is done for us, but there's really not a lot to discuss with this auction, so we'll quickly jump into the play. East passed in first seat, we opened two spades, preemptive in second seat, unfavorable. And we got the Ace of Clubs lead. Now normally I would say for a lot of these hands, we want to pause and think about the hand uh, at trick one before we play to the first trick. Here I'm going to jump through the first couple of tricks very quickly and then we'll take stock of what's going on. So West led the club ace, East followed with the two, West switches to the queen of hearts, which holds the next trick, West continues the jack of hearts, on which East plays the king, and we rough. So this is the position we've reached after three tricks have been played. So I want to discuss how this kind of tug of war between probability and bridge logic can come to influence some of your decisions in the play. Obviously on this hand at this point, we have, barring a disaster in the spade suit, the potential to lose one spade trick, probably not two of them, and we have a diamond finesse that we would like to take to see if the king of diamonds is on side. Well, how are we going to play the hand? The ace of clubs lead could be from shortness, but let's first pause and take a look at the heart suit and what's going on there, because I think that will allow us to form a clearer picture of what's going on between the opponent's hands. West switched to the queen of hearts at trick two, and then played the jack of hearts as East produced the king. So first question is, where is the ace of hearts? Well, West would not have switched to the queen of hearts from original holding of ace queen jack. That would be nonsense. So East must have the heart ace. A less intuitive question might be, where's the 10 of hearts? I think West has the Ten of Hearts, and here's why. West switched the Queen of Hearts from their Queen Jack holding. That makes a lot of sense uh, from the honor combination. But would West have continued then by playing the Jack of Hearts if they had started with a holding like Queen Jack Fourth or Queen Jack Fifth? I don't think so. They would be a little bit too worried of blowing a trick into partner's King Doubleton where we have ducked from, say, Ace Ten Third then they would be condensing their heart tricks into just one on this hand while setting up the Ten of Hearts for Declare. So I think West started with the Ten of Hearts. Now that we're pretty confident about where the honor location is in hearts, this might help us unpack what happened at trick one a little bit better. West, having what appears to be a very strong heart holding to lead from, Queen Jack 10, decided to lead the Ace of Clubs unsupported. Now, a little bit of a caveat here that in these robot games, sometimes the robots just really love leading aces. They like to look at the dummy, they like to try and figure out if they need to switch or maybe potentially give their partner a rough in the suit where they've led the ace. So West could have ace of fifth of clubs, for example. West could have the singleton ace of clubs. In a human game, I think we would all kind of agree that West is marked with a singleton ace of clubs at this point in the play. Um, maybe ace doubleton is possible, but for the robots that is not all that implied. Then again, if we combine that information with the fact that West had a very clear alternative choice of opening lead in Queen Jack 10 of hearts, Queen Jack 10 fifth, Queen Jack 10 fourth, however many hearts West has, it starts to indicate that West might be looking to get themselves a club rough. 
So maybe they have the singleton ace of clubs, maybe they have ace doubleton. It seems a bit less likely that they have club length, given what we know about the heart suit. Either way, this hand now apparently comes down to, can we guess the queen of spades? And probability would dictate that we should play the spade suit by leading low to the ace on the first round. If we alternatively decided to finesse west for the queen of spades by leading, say, the jack of spades out of our hand, we would lose to a whole variety of layouts that leading low to the ace would not. For example, if either player has a singleton queen of spades, which will happen a decent margin of the time, about 6% uh, or so, then we could pick that up by playing low to the ace on the first round, but running the jack would either lose to the singleton queen in east hand or get covered by west queen and then east nine fourth would set up for a trick. So probability it wise, it does seem like we should definitely play a spade to the ace at this point. We pick up more holdings, there's kind of a coin flip between who has the spade queen. And even if we factor in this possibility that west has uh, shorter clubs, it's possible West has six hearts, in which case the disparity of empty spaces between the East-West hands is not too large, um, but there is the very real additional factor that we could pick up a singleton queen in either player's hand, which is nothing to laugh about. Um, so from a probability or pure math perspective, we definitely want to play a spade to the ace here. And I think that's where a lot of bridge players' reasoning would end. But we have another crucial piece of information that we haven't utilized, which is going to massively swing the probability in favor of an alternative plan. And that is that East did not open the bidding in first seat. East is favorable, and most players will be happy to open any 12 count, any 11 count even, at these conditions, especially when they have such a strong heart holding like ace king third, ace king fourth, even ace king fifth. So. There are only two missing honor cards that we haven't seen in the deck yet, those being the King of Diamonds and the Queen of Spades. Well, if I asked you who has the King of Diamonds, you would say it's 50-50. East or West could have the King of Diamonds, each with equally likely probability. If I asked you who had the Queen of Spades, you would also say it's 50-50. East or West could have the Queen of Spades with equally likely probability. And you would be right if we didn't have this extra information that given we know East has started with the Ace and King of Hearts, if they had both the King of Diamonds and Queen of Spades, they would have 12 high card points and they would absolutely have opened the bidding with something, a heart, a diamond, a club, whatever it would be in first seat. Well, it seems that there are four ways to distribute the Queen of Diamond or King of Diamonds and Queen of Spades between the East West hands but now we've eliminated one of those options, that East has both of those cards. And if we think that to some extent these four options originally could have occurred with equal probability, now we have only three options, one of which West has both of these cards, the King of Diamonds and the Queen of Spades, one of which is West has the King of Diamonds and East has the Queen of Spades, and one of which is East has the uh, King of Diamonds and West has the Queen of Spades. So notice now that two of these three options involve West having the Spade Queen, which means that combining our bridge logic with our mathematical prowess here and being able to determine these probabilities, West is a two to one favorite to hold the Spade Queen. And that means that if we're not getting two to one odds back on the a priori mathematical chances of playing a Spade to the Ace, then we should definitely be hooking west for the spade queen. And it, a very quick calculation will reveal that it is not even close um, between the two potential lines of play now. Because west is two to one likely to hold the queen of spades, we should definitely be finessing them for that card. So that's why at trick four, I led the jack of spades. West played low. I played low from dummy. And the jack of spades held. After a spade to the ace, I roughed the nine of hearts to get back to hand, pulled the last trump, tried the diamond finesse, which lost, was able to rough the ace of hearts and claim 10 tricks. So this is kind of a fun illustration of this concept, but you might say, okay, 
sure, Rob, this is uh, something that a lot of bridge players might know, especially some of the uh, top players in the world who are competing in this event. And this was the traveler for this hand, which was a little bit surprising to me, that only six pairs out of the 39 that played this hand, or six players out of the 39 that played this hand, came up with the right conclusion that uh, we should be hooking west for the spade queen. And I don't know if that was because they went through this similar analysis that I did, that, that now there's a two to one possibility that west has that card, um, given the knowledge that we've come up with based on the missing high cards and the fact that east had passed, or if it was for a different reason, maybe because of the ace of clubs lead, they thought it was more likely that west was short in clubs and therefore longer in spades. But this goes to show that even some what I would call elementary math concepts, uh, like calculating these probabilities, when you combine them with bridge logic, everything becomes so much more murky. And you really have to work out every hand individually to understand what's going on on these deals. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments if this is something that you've come across or that you use frequently in your games, or if this is something totally new to you. Have a great day, everyone.